As you guys know, we do a lot of fitness endeavors, including a lot of intense workouts aimed at torching calories and building muscle. But in the midst of all that, we always integrate a consistent yoga practice. Yoga is part of our fitness, but it's also part of our spiritual journey through this world. It has the power to quiet the mind, heal the soul, and teach us lessons. George came to yoga a bit after me, so as a newbie, one of his big lessons is humility. Dudes always think yoga is so easy, <laughs> and they are so wrong! We need assistance on aisle nine. Assistance on aisle nine. In celebration of National Yoga Day this week, we caught up with a very special yogi for a chat sesh and a little Q&A to shed some light on her practice and top tips. Hey guys, Jamie here with NYC Fit Fam. I am so excited. We're here today with Danielle Radalski. Yay! Yay. <laughs> I have been following Danielle for a really long time on Instagram. She is one of those people that I came across that I cannot take my eyes off of. She's really well known for her beautiful <laughs> yoga flows in front of a blue wall um, that is in her studio here in Westchester. So tell me a little bit about how you got started in yoga. So I actually came to yoga about four years ago. Um, it was through a health scare, believe it or not. Um, I was a big life of the party type person in college and I just went for like a routine physical and my doctor was like, I think that your liver is swollen. So I was like, no, I'm like, I'm 22 at the time. Like the, you're, you have the wrong, wrong chart, wrong girl, not me. So long story short, um, I was basically just not taking care of myself. So just on a whim, I went to a yoga class with my roommate and that was it. That was pretty much when my love affair with yoga started. That is so. amazing. So you're actually kind of blowing my mind right now because <laughs> we've shared a little bit on NYC Fit Fam. So George and I also came from the party lifestyle. Yep. I um, worked in PR for nightclubs for a very long time and George works in the music industry. And um, like a, about a decade ago for me, um, my life was going boom. Yep, I hear that. <laughs> and what ended up happening was I found health and wellness and I found fitness. And in the fitness community, I found a community of a, a tribe. So it sounds like we have a very similar yeah. story. So it's obviously National Yoga Day today and it's a day to celebrate all the good things that yoga gives all of us. I have a question. So why does yoga make you feel so good? Like sometimes when I'm, I'm having a really crummy day, I know intuitively that going to a yoga class will probably help turn things around. But I'm usually like, oh, what's it gonna do? It's not gonna do that much. Yeah. And then I get there. And I'm there for literally three minutes and it's like the world opens and it turns my frown upside down. Yep. What is that? Why is yoga so yummy? So for me, yoga is a bit of an escape. So when I go to take a class, it's a break. I don't have to think. I'm not thinking about what I'm going to do next. I'm not thinking about what I have to do later. It's a time for you to really live in the moment. Like I shut my brain off and I commit to going in there and taking care of myself um, and focusing on my breath. I'm a big believer in energy too. So I think that if you're connecting with an instructor, you're connecting with the place that you're taking a class, you'll also get that aha moment. Girl, you were speaking my language. And sweating. As soon as you start to sweat, do yeah. you feel better? I mean, you do feel better. Yeah. The number one reason I like working out, it's not because of weight loss. Right. It's not because of burning calories. It is because it is truly the only time of day that I'm actually present. So I put it out there to you guys on our NYC Fit Fam Instagram account. Um, what questions do you want to ask Danielle? And you guys <laughs> definitely had some. So. Let's go over a few yeah, questions totally. that people had about yoga. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so at Jonatown asked, he really wants to know more about yoga for beginners. He's a complete newbie. We also got this question from Mahogany Drive. Okay, so I get this question a lot. My number one thing is to stick with it. For the first like four or five classes, once you start to have a little bit of a handle on what these poses are and what these movements are, you're gonna feel so much more comfortable and you're gonna enjoy the practice more. This one is from at Eat Love Plank. Mm -hmm. I love that handle. Also, at Valerie Fitton asked this question. I think a lot of people want to know this. How to push past the burn and get out of your head? 
please Danielle, <laughs> tell us how to get out of our heads. I wish there was like a magic like, <laughs> do this and you'll never feel it again. Um, for me, what helps is I use counting, I use my breath, so if I'm holding a plank, I'll say, okay, I'm gonna count to 20. The more that you're actually focusing on your breath and not so much on the logistics of the movement, the further you're gonna be able to push yourself. So, and that's a practice, that's not, it's something I work on in every single practice. The practice yeah. is to push through when it gets hard exactly. and to find the way to keep going and then that transmits into your daily life. Yeah. So our girl, Jewel underscore Fit Mom, she asked, what are some moves to help stretch the hips for kickboxers? Interesting. Super good. Um, kickboxing is super intense, so opening up those hips is really important. Um, a couple things I would suggest. First is going to be warming up with a few high lunges with your back knee lowered. So what that's gonna do is really warm up your front hip flexor. From there, once you warm those up, I would suggest doing a pigeon pose, a lizard pose, and a recline figure four stretch. Um, all of those are things that are really gonna get also into the outside of your hip, like almost underneath, underneath your glutes, which, you know, obviously kickboxers, using those legs, using your glutes, using everything. Um, so I would say that those three or four stretches would be killer. Awesome. So at Lipstick and Earrings is obviously a fan of yours. She follows your feed. She said her Insta photos are so amazing. <laughs> um, what are some of your favorite moves? Um, okay. I would definitely say headstands are my favorite. I think just because I'm finally feeling like confident and comfortable in them to do a lot of fun variations. Um, but something that I'm always working on is hip openers. So a pigeon pose, a reclined figure four, um, and then some of my other favorites are balancing poses. So poses like half moon is really good for your hips, opens up for your inner thighs. Um, yeah, so those would have to be my three favorites. So I love seeing you do this headstand here. So what are some of the benefits of inversions? So inversions, for me, I teach them at the end of the practice. Something that's really good is that just your legs being over your head, it helps drain all of the blood back into the core part of your body, into your heart, into your head. Um, that's one of the reasons I love them. Another reason is the strength that they create. So whether or not you think you're using it, you're using that core. Um, the core is something I cue every single move of every single class that I teach. Whether you are sitting down straight like this or you are upside down with your hands like this, it doesn't matter where you are, you're using your core. Um, so inversions are really, really good at developing that core strength and then they're really good for your mind. I mean, there's something about being upside down, it shifts your perspective. Um, it's almost like an outer body experience that I have when I'm flipped upside down. Last time I did a headstand, I was in gymnastics. I was about seven years old. And then I went to my first yoga class and I'm like, a headstand, I can do that. Like I did this growing up. Damn, they're yeah. hard. <laughs> but there's something magical about yeah. them. So uh, speaking of core, um, I had a question from at NYC Fit Fam. <laughs> Uh, George actually was asking you earlier, yeah. he really wanted to know, especially for men doing yoga who are maybe interested in, um, you know, he has really good upper body strength, but always trying to work and engage that core. So I like to do a lot of plank variations. So people think, okay, I can hold this plank for a minute and a half, that's it. I say, while you're in that plank, bring your knee towards your elbow. Then not only bring it towards your elbow, but bring it to the other elbow. So cross it over. So you're getting into those obliques, you're really working into that lower belly. Another thing that's really good that also works your legs is from down dog doing pike jumps. So really bending at the knees and then trying to bring your hips over your shoulders. So that'll also create some core strength. Um, V-ups are really good. Um, boat pose is very good, also gets into your hips. So boat pose, when you're in boat pose, you can also drop your arms over to one side and then to the other. That's really good. Um, I'm a big proponent of dolphin pose. So you wanna bring your palms flat. A lot of variations of plank are clasped. Keep your palms flat, good. Then what you're going to do, drop your head, walk your feet towards your, tor towards your arms. Good, so bend your knees totally, yep. So this is essentially a down dog on your forearm. So straighten through your legs, walk your feet back out a little more, straighten through your legs, and let your head drop. You're gonna feel this weight in your shoulders, yeah. So you wanna activate through your lower belly and where you're probably most likely going to feel this is the shoulders. You are using <laughs> your core, but this is killer. Anybody that asks about, okay, forearm stand, okay, anything like that, that is this pose. So dolphin pose and then going into a plank, that'll get into your shoulders and into your core. So speaking of uh, weakness or tightness, 
um, at Sweat and Heels, hi Rachel, <laughs> she asked, um, can you try to find out why my shoulders are so tight and weak when I'm in downward dog? Am I injured in my shoulders perhaps? Okay, so this is common in down dog. People get frustrated with their arms. First thing I would suggest is to try widening your stance. So anybody with tight shoulders, walk your hands out just a couple inches towards the right and towards the left. Good, so just a wider stance on that mat is going to give your shoulders a bit of a break. Well, that was sufficiently amazing. <laughs> I feel all limbered up and I didn't even do anything. <laughs> Babe, how are you feeling? I can't wait to try that downward dolphin one more time. Yeah, Gonna yeah, I, I could it. tell. I could tell that was really your favorite. Yeah. <laughs> and the Vivo, that was good too. I like that you one. You like that one? Yeah. Uh -huh. Extra swimming. You know what? I always think it's great when dudes are good sports and they, and yeah, they take so something that's a little out of their comfort zone. And yoga is for everybody. So I think that's also what we're trying to convey here. 100%. So Danielle, thank you thank for you. joining yeah. us. It was thank such you. a treat. Where can people find you on Instagram? Um, at Danielle underscore Rodolski. Awesome. Thanks for joining us today for more videos on fitness, mindfulness, nutrition, and um, random handstands in the <laughs> middle of a field. Don't forget to subscribe. And some thumbs up. See ya.